Hello? Hello? Hello, hello. Do I sound good? Audio, audio is good? Loud enough? <clears throat> hello, hello. Can people hear me? Everybody's doing good. It is hot outside, so I hope everybody's staying cool. Stay cool. I guess we will start soon. I hope people can hear me. I don't know. No one said has said anything in chat, so I'm hoping people can hear me. Maybe my chat's not updating. I don't know. No, it seems like it's up to date. Odd. Give me a sec, guys. I don't know. I guess if you can hear me, I am not sure. I guess I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Hey, yeah? Okay. <laughs> I guess... If they get in the heart, then I guess people can't hear me. Okay. <laughs> I was like, not sure. It was like a tech thing. I'm like, do I have to change the audio? Did I get it set up? It's been a while since I streamed. I think the last time that I was on was for the roast. And then we went on our summer... Was it summer break? I can't remember. It's been so long. It's been a while since I've streamed, so... If I'm a little rusty, you'll have to forgive a little bit of the rustiness. Uh, so hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to our Friday afternoon, or I guess, is it evening? Is five o'clock considered evening? I, I never know. I, I say afternoon and some people are like, it's not the afternoon anymore. But I uh, hope everybody's enjoying their end of Friday and having a chill day. Hope everybody's looking for, forward to a good weekend. So, um, yeah, we've been having camps recently and that's a bit busy. Just finished the animation camp. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, since had a little bit of a not too sure if tech was working or not, we're just gonna jump right into it and we're gonna do a little bit of housekeeping as usual so hello everybody welcome to our stream <laughs> hi josh hello um my name is josh i'm one of the instructors here at wing canvas and for those of the those of you who do not know who we are uh, we are not just a youtube channel that has a lot of uh, art tutorial videos but we are also 
um, in art school where we actually teach lessons where you can sign up for art classes like figure drawing, digital painting, manga and anime, and a lot of, um, uh, I also teach like mentorships. So there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of different types of classes that you can all sign up for. So check us out if you want to improve your art skills because uh, videos are great, but getting in-person feedback from one of our many professional teachers is a great way of improving your art. And if you enjoy our stream and you like the videos that we make, feel free to give us a like and subscribe. Um, we also have Patreon. So if you really enjoy what we're doing here, we love uh, any kind of support you're able to give us and Patreon is a great way to help support us as it helps us allow to or it allows us to continue making videos like these on YouTube. Um, but it will also give you perks such as uh, members only chat and critique on Discord. Uh, you'll get some special files as well as emotes um, for Discord and YouTube. So yeah, and uh, we also have social medias on Discord. Instagram and Facebook and that's also where we posted a lot of our drawings after the stream is done So if you are not following us there and you would like to see the final art pieces in all of its glory The social media is a great way to check all of that stuff because that's where it goes. So yeah And we're gonna jump right into it. Okay, great thing chat was starting to update. I was like this is like hello is anybody there? <laughs> and then now I see it, it. It is now on a roll. Yeah, chat decided to not update. I mean, I saw you, the all the reactions. So, yeah, Josh, I blink. I do blink. Oh my goodness, it is. I have discovered the ability to blink. It now works for me. Yeah, <laughs> it is 5:06 p.m. for me. So now that the intros are done, we're gonna do kind of like a segment that I think we're trying to keep up now which is to go over the art submissions that you guys have so every week or not every week but like every month we have some uh, art challenge not some but we have a art challenge that we have every single month and this month is the challenge of drawing vehicles and you guys are given the entire month to do as many drawings as you want in order to tackle the challenge and then you put it into our uh, discord in the uh, art submissions section so once the art is uploaded every uh, stream we try to go over some of the submissions people have and just highlight the people's uh, you know the community's hard work in kind of tackling the challenges and so I have picked up the latest ones but there haven't been too many because I'm guessing like vehicles is kind of challenging it's kind of a tough one but I grabbed a bunch um, and I, hopefully I, I'm not repeating any of them. So first off, we're going to start with Suze. Hello, Sue. I, I feel like you're usually in the chat or on the stream. Uh, hopefully you're catching it as I'm highlighting your piece. Yeah, I really love this. You got that great kind of texture that goes onto like the cardboard. I really like how this like kind of just feel and aesthetic looks. And I love your drawing of the squirrel. Like I think you did a really, really good job on the hair and like the fur of a, I'm guessing it's a squirrel uh, or maybe a chipmunk, I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> but uh, I love this. this. The atmosphere and the tone for this is really, really nice. So yeah, great job on this. It's awesome. Uh, the cardboard is looking cool too. But yeah, vehicles is a challenging one. I'm seeing it's one of our hardest challenges yet. I believe so. Vehicles are not easy. Even I don't have the easiest time with uh, vehicles. Yes, yeah, squirrel. Yeah, squirrel. It's so cute. I love I love the expression and the fur, especially the tail. Tail looks really, really good. So great job on, on this piece. I think you're really successful with the character for sure. Uh, and then the next one. You guys can kind of see it on my layers, I guess. Um, this one is by Midnight Outline. I don't know if uh, you're here, but tackle the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle from the show. I actually haven't watched this version, but I've heard people really like uh, really like it so far. Or actually, have people said it is? Maybe it's not this one. It's the previous series, but I don't know. Do people like this one? Is this one good? I really like the art style. It's definitely different, but... Oh, hey, Midnight, you are here. Yeah, this is an awesome drawing. I think your characters turned out really, really well. And um, and the, the vehicle, this is like crazy how like 
how you tackled this because this is one chunky boy <laughs> this is like a huge tank and and that's like a good thing i love how much space it takes up to really sell just how big this uh this tank is so like really good job on tackling this vehicle challenge so yeah should be should be proud of uh how this turned out uh, the next one is by Tamarind Lover, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but this is... I was like, okay, <laughs> someone's flexing how well they can do a vehicle. I, I'm i like, is this... It, it almost looks like a 3D model. You got the spheres to show lighting and everything, which is like really cool. And it looks like you paint, like actually painted it because there's some inconsistencies with the sphere so it's actually kind of kind of crazy that you actually painted these lighting spheres to get an idea as to what the lighting would be so you have accurate lighting on this kind of plane which is like a really uh good tip actually for those who really want to try out uh their lighting skills and test how good they can do lighting this is the sphere test is a good way to just give yourself an idea as to how lighting works uh, for the different colors um, but yeah this turned out really really good i wonder like if you had any kind of uh, uh references or anything because it's it's almost like it's it's too good <laughs> but i guess that's the best compliment that you can get in terms of uh drawing vehicles yeah and then lastly we have one by just just max <laughs> just good old good old max i guess not a complicated name so that's nice um, I mean, if you have a complicated name, that that's totally fine too. I'm just like everybody has like this uh, username, and then we got Max, so that's cool. Um, this one's really cool too. I love the world building for this. You got really captured that smoky, misty atmosphere, and I love how this this I don't know what it, it's like a halo, kind of like a ring for a bunch of waterfalls coming down, and I guess it's one giant pond or lake. Maybe there's a word for this, like a geographical term, but I, I don't know. But yeah, this is really cool. I really like the concept. And I love how it's like in the Discord, they were like, yeah, there are vehicles. You just got to look closely. <laughs> and it looks like you drew that you really wanted to do an environmental piece and then went for like these, like a boat and this like really cool looking ship. But I mean, technically, that's, I guess, fulfills what the challenge is. You drew a vehicle. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this was really cool. I really love the atmosphere in this. So yeah, and good job. So good job, everyone who submitted for the challenge. We really love seeing what our community is able to do. And it's always awesome to see just like all the different art styles, all the different takes and approaches to it, and how different people just tackle the challenge. So again, if you're curious as to what the challenges are, join our Discord. That's where we uh, put up the challenge prompts for every month. Uh, and then you get one month to tackle the challenge, I'm guessing as many times as you want. Um, and then we'll go through them during our live streams at the beginning of every stream. So yeah, you have about, let's see, how long is July? July is 31 days. So you have tonight, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday to maybe get some vehicle challenges. And then if you can get it before Sunday, um, then we'll go through them on our Sunday stream. And I believe it's Iggy and Jesse's stream, I think, if I got it right. But yeah, they'll go through it. So if you really want to get a shout out, uh, try to get it done before Sunday because then that's where we'll shout it out. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, as you all saw in our... Actually, I should save. I actually did not save this file just yet. <laughs> Give me a sec. I, blah, 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 blah. I should have saved this beforehand. I'm going to call this Barbie. Barbie here figure barbie figures barbie figure stream let's call it that barbie figure stream <clears throat> and so if you guys didn't can already tell by the title of this stream we are drawing barbie because the movie just came out i think last week and so i'm gonna take on the challenge of drawing barbie in a realistic proportion and drawing Barbie in the more traditional doll-like, exaggerated type of proportion. So we're going to be doing 
two different types of figures and I'm just going to walk through basically the steps and the my thought process as we're doing this and it's going to be a little bit of a review and I guess uh, kind of reminder as to what it's like to draw a figure and such. So I'm just going to walk through the steps and kind of break down how I analyze the reference and these are ones that I found just on Pinterest randomly. Um, and I really like this outfit. I was trying to get a feel for like which outfit I wanted to go for. So I kind of really like this cowboy all pink type of uh, outfit with the bell bottoms. I think that's what they're called. The, the pants that kind of like fan out. So I really like this. And this is what we're going to try to tackle. Uh, I'll try to do my best to do it. Because uh, to be fair, I have not done a very realistic human portion drawing in a while but for the first figure that i'm going to be doing i'm going to be drawing uh this one i guess i'll make my brush bigger too just get a little bit bigger um let's see yeah that's pretty good so i'm going to be drawing uh this one over here i really like this pose and we're going to break down the steps to how i go about doing it so before i actually go ahead and draw the figure I like to analyze how the character is balanced because if we're doing something a little bit more structured a little bit more realistic it's always a good uh, a good step is to always actually look at your reference what is it that we're actually drawing and don't just kind of wing it it's always a good idea to kind of check also the uh, I guess center of gravity or how our character is balanced so the first thing that I go for is Let's see, I'm going to lower it so you guys can see it. The first thing that I track is where the center of the head is. And I can see that the head is here. And if I draw a straight line down, I can see that the overall pose is pretty like straight. Whereas versus this one where she's on, I'm guessing, roller blades, she's at an angle. So what I would do the same thing. So whenever I'm tracking a pose and how they're standing... I would draw a straight line and kind of track oh the feet are off to the side and this helps me figure out like how much the character is leaning or tilting and it helps make sure that my drawings are balanced so when i'm gonna draw the pose that's what i'm gonna try to keep track of the next few things i try to look for are the kind of flow that the body has and for this one even though it looks pretty straight, I'm going to try to see if there's some angles that I can exaggerate a little bit. And the first thing that stands out to me are the way the shoulders are tilting. And the shoulders are kind of tilting this way, in this direction. Maybe I'll use a different color so you guys can see it better. And we'll go for very bright blue. Or it's not very bright, but it's very saturated blue. So the shoulders are kind of tilting in this direction. And then so as when we're drawing figures, we always want to contrast the uh, shoulders and the hips. So if the shoulders are tilting this way, then I'm going to want to tilt also the hips in the opposite direction to give it a flow. And then the next thing I look for is the torso. So how is the torso moving? And at first glance, when you look at this torso, it's like, well, it looks like it's just straight like this. And then the hips come down like this. That seems pretty straightforward, but that kind of makes a pose boring. So what I like to try to emphasize is where is the body stretching and where is the body pinching? So, so the way that I kind of think about it is that if her hips are moving kind of down, then this part over here has to compress. It's kind of like a spring. When we draw a spring, if something were to stretch on the right on one side, like here, it needs to compress and pinch on the other side. So I'm, that's what I'm looking for when I'm drawing a body. And I can see that, that it's stretching here just a little bit. And then it's pinching on the other side for the hips. And then I can see that the legs, they're pretty much going straight down like this. And then it's straight here and then bends at the knees on the other side. So now that I'm kind of analyzing and figuring out like what the body is doing, this is going to help a lot when I'm trying to figure out the overall structure of the pose. It doesn't mean that I'll get it straight away, but it helps guide my drawing. So 
I'm going to just repeat what, what we went through in case this is kind of new for some people. I look for where the head is aligned with the rest of the body. So in this case, it was where's the center of the head and I draw a straight line down. And I look for what aligns with the head. Is the foot right underneath the head or is it off to the side? If it's off to the side, then it's probably going to be a little bit unbalanced. If the feet are directly underneath the head, uh, if the feet are directly underneath the head, then it's going to be probably balanced. Uh, and then the next thing I look for are the ways the shoulders are tipping. So this is step one with the head. And then step two is with the hips and the shoulders. How are they kind of angled and contracting each other or contrasting each other, counter balancing each other. And then the third part is the torso. So where is it stretching? And then where is it pinching? And I'll maybe lower the, the layers even more so you can see the lines and what I'm doing with this figure. So this is what I'm doing. And I'll maybe duplicate it and then move it so you can see it. So this is what it looks like without the figure underneath. And I'm just maybe going to delete this one over here. So all of that was analyzing. Just observing the reference, observing what we're drawing, and see if we can make a as accurate of a of an observation and illustration as possible. And the best thing to do is not act exactly to just draw immediately. Sometimes it's a good idea to sit back and actually look at what it is that we're drawing and not trying to make it up. So now that we got that down, now's the hard part actually drawing it. So I'm gonna try to follow uh, what I did with this figure and for me sometimes I don't like to start off uh, immediately with the um, with the head I actually like to start with the torso and the shoulders so again I'm just gonna turn this part off and then bring it back up this time because now we're copying it so <clears throat> I'm gonna try to not zoom in and out as too much so the one gets like motion sick but I'm also gonna try to just draw it as much as I you know without zooming in too much so I'm gonna just mark down the gesture line for me and for me this is kind of it's just a straight pose she's just standing pretty much upright so I'm not gonna really do anything too fancy with it uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is look at the shoulders so remember this breakdown that we just did I'm going to use that to help guide the pose. Now, I might not try to draw it one to one accurate for the figure, but instead I'm going to maybe try to accentuate certain things. Now, for the torso, for me, the torso is kind of like from the shoulders to uh, right where the pelvis starts. Some people might do it a little bit differently some people might kind of be like no it goes a little lower some people might want to have it a little higher but for me i find that it's easier to kind of just segment it in these in this kind of different way and you can see that i don't necessarily start with the like the realistic prism i find that the realistic prism is a little distracting so i kind of just go along with starting off with like a basic shape for the torso and then mark down where I want the chest to be and then where I want the hips to be. And remember, shoulders and hips are always counteracting each other. So they're never parallel. You don't want them to be, be the same. Again, you can think of it kind of like a slinky. If you were to bend a slinky, all those rings kind of need to follow the momentum of the, uh, of the slinky. So, yeah. And I have not taken a look at chat for a while, but I hope everyone's doing good. Oh, oh yeah, I am using Sketchbook. Thanks, Joe, for keeping up with chat and answering people's questions. Um, but yeah, I'm using Sketchbook just because I like how clean the UI is. I know that Jesse prefers uh, Photoshop. I think Iggy uses uh, Clip Studio. Um, and I like to use Sketchbook. Because it's free and it's like super simple and super clean in terms of like a UI. It's definitely super limited with what you can do with it. But it's a good software for getting something done really, really quickly. And I like 
that you basically zoom, pan, and rotate the screen all with the space bar. So it makes it really like a really easy to use, straightforward type of uh, tool. Has anyone seen the Barbie movie yet? I'm like thinking about watching it next week, but apparently tickets have been booking out pretty quick at the theater that me and my friends are planning on watching it at. But I need to check. <laughs> I want to watch it, so no spoilers. No spoilers in the chat. Do not enjoy spoilers. So keep it... Keep it... Don't spoil anything if people have watched it. I just want to kind of hear if people liked it or not. Like, was uh, was it good? Was it not what you expected? Did it kind of... I don't know, break expectations? It's pretty boring. Oh, dang. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm kind of going in with... I don't even know what to call my expectations. I'm not going in with high expectations, but I'm kind of just curious as to, like, what the movie's going to be, like, about. Well, I kind of know what it's about, but I'm kind of curious as to, like, what's going to happen in the movie. Um, I really like the, uh, the director's other movies, like uh, Little Women was really good. Uh, she had some, like, other movies that I can't remember, but I remember the direct. I like the director, so I kind of had some high expectations for for this movie. I don't know. No, I don't know if I'm gonna watch since movies aren't really my thing. That's fair. I know some people like movies aren't like their thing, so yeah. Uh, how do I find the selection tool on Sketchbook? Honestly, yeah, it took me a while because it's very, it's a little odd <laughs> uh, for those who are, I guess, wondering. Uh, you can use this. So this is like the move tool up here. You have three options. You've got the square selection tool. You got the lasso and then you just got the entire thing. So if I, that's how I can move everything all at once. But the lasso tool for a sketchbook is a little weird because as you can see, it like shows you it, it's kind of weird it takes a while to get used to because if you're like whoa this is nothing like photoshop or clip studio or even krita it's kind of bizarre but i actually don't mind it i kind of like it uh and then you have the more complicated selection tools over here the ones that most people i think are used to yeah okay so somebody also loved it it's a musical. Is it a musical? I don't know. Oppenheimer and Barbie need a cook. <laughs> what is that? What does that even mean? Cook what? Cook uh, cook some, uh, cook a meal. Because meals are like chemistry and Oppenheimer, Oppie as they call him, is, uh, is a chemist. Cooking is basically chemistry, chem chemists. Who did that decided not to go into science want to check it out yeah yeah i want to watch barbie for sure it's really corny okay okay i feel like isn't that the vibe they're kind of going for this very uh kind of corny-ish not taking itself too seriously kind of vibe i don't know So right now for the torso, I'm kind of looking at where the torso is turning. And in this photo, I would say that it's looks like a very minor three quarters. So it's not a very full three quarters. We can see a little bit of the side, but not too much. Um, so I'm just going to keep that in mind as I'm drawing the figure. Now for the limbs, uh, I like to figure out what the limbs are doing through the angles. So you can see that when I drew the legs, I kind of erased it already, but after I drew the hips over here, I don't know why I drew that line, but once I drew the hips over there, I didn't immediately draw like the volumes that some people do for the limbs. I instead like to draw the angles because it keeps kind of the leg grounded in terms of where it's bending. So personally, I like to figure out the angle of the limbs first before I tackle like the volumes and how thick the arms are because it helps keep the the direction that the arms are tilting in a bit more grounded so when I'm looking at the arm in the reference I can see that it's tilting to the left 
down to the left a little bit, but not too much. And I'm also looking at how close the hand is to the pants, like that distance. So that's what I'm kind of doing is I'm going to put a dot over there to represent where the arm is in a way attached to the body, kind of like an action figure, which I guess in a way it's appropriate for, for Barbie since she's a toy or a doll in a sense. Um, and let's see, the hands usually cut about halfway down the thigh so i'm gonna say that the hands are gonna be somewhere over there i'm just gonna mark it with a box just to ground where the hands are roughly going to be and now i'm gonna start putting in the volume for the hand or for the arm and i'm just gonna kind of roughly track follow the angle that i had for the arm that i just drew and then I'm just gonna fill the thickness of it. Um, now this is kind of like my first pass probably. This is gonna be my first go at trying to figure out what this pose looks like and how it should look like. Uh, and then afterwards we'll do a cleanup layer just to clean everything up. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other arm. The other arm is kind of poking out a little bit. And then I think it bends at the arm just a smidge. And I can see that the hand is probably around like here. Something that you can always do to track whether your, I don't know, your arms or limbs are in the right angle is to look at one and then track the angle to the other one to figure out whether it's in the right spot. So I look at the hand that I have and I go like, okay, yeah, it's somewhere probably around here for the hand. And again, I'm just going to mark it with a square I'm basically just placing marks so I can get a feel for where it would be roughly. Uh, and then we're just going to slowly move up to the hardest part, the part that I've been saving <laughs> for the end. Because I'm like, oh boy, it's the head. It's the hardest part. It's the most intimidating part. So saved it for last. Saved the best for last. <clears throat> It's very Barbie fashion for it to be corny. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's such a 60s, 50s type of fashion that it's meant to be very over the top and everything. Narrative songs. Really, I was not expecting there to be songs. So now I'm kind of like, are there songs in the movie? I feel like I've gotten more and more sensitive to spoilers. So I'm kind of like, I don't really want to know if there's songs or not. Uh, but I guess now I'm going in kind of maybe half expecting there to be songs. I know it's like whether knowing there's songs or not, it's not a spoiler. But it's like, imagine if I didn't know there was a song and then they all started breaking out singing. And I was like, whoa, what the? I did not expect that. I feel like that is kind of like a cool thing I would have, I would like to know as like a surprise. But I feel like that's more of like lately. Whereas I think before then, I wouldn't have really cared, like, as a, when I was younger. It's like, ah, oh, okay, who cares? Yeah, sure. But now I'm like, you know what? I don't want to know. I don't want to watch the trailers. I don't want to see if, uh, what's going to happen. Just surprise me. I want to go in not knowing anything that's going to happen. Okay. I think I'm going to make this bigger. I forgot to, uh. I will say that I broke one of the cardinal rules in a way for drawing, which is to figure out, map out the entire figure first and then <laughs> draw it. But I decided to just go for it. Pikmin 4? Oh, is anyone playing Pikmin 4? Is that something people are playing? The Holy Trinity, Barbie, Oppenheimer, and Pikmin. <laughs> That's not a thing, was it? That's, that, that's kind of funny. I love how Pikmin just slid in there. The whole vibe reminds me of Grease. Oh, Grease. I think he means like oil Grease. <laughs> not the country Grease. But the movie is kind of political. Really interesting. I mean, I have seen some kind of people kind of frustrated at some aspects of it. But I don't know. I'm kind of just going in. Got the spelling wrong. Saying what didn't happen is a spoil. Oh, 
<laughs> that's going maybe that's a bit too far i mean <laughs> sure yeah, going in blind. My sister has decided to not watch a single trailer, but she has this like special ability where she just forgets what happens in trailers, which I'm kind of like, how do you like what? How, how do you make that happen? She's just like, you just don't think about it and you forget what happened in the trailer. I'm like, that's not how my brain works. I can't do that. <laughs> trailers typically yeah so i kind of don't watch trailers anymore because they give us so much and sometimes they give away like these really cool sequences where i'm like oh i kind of would have liked to not have known that that was gonna happen you know everyone is play everyone is playing pikmin 4 no way really i didn't know pikmin was that big i mean like i know people liked pikmin i didn't know people liked pikmin that much It's a good, it's a good skill to have to forget trailers. <laughs> dog it. Oh, right. The dog. Yeah, I forgot. That's, I forgot that there's the dog that everybody liked when the trailer came out. Right. Okay. Now this pose, man, I haven't drawn a face angle like this in a long time, especially I think it's because Margot Robbie's smiling. So uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to map out the mannequin of her face. And you might be like, uh, what? What do you mean by that? And before I start any kind of facial features or anything like that, I like to figure out the placement of her head. So that's what the circle is for. And then I like to map out the plane of her face. So the angle that she's looking at and how it's tilting and roughly how big the face is going to be. So because we worked backwards in a sense where we started from the torso and then branched outwards, getting the head down is a little bit trickier uh, versus like if I started with the head, then the head might look good, but then sometimes you get the gesture wrong. So it's a little bit of like a a balance and a bit of a pros and cons sometimes you'll start out drawing the character one way and then it's like okay we start with the body gets the gesture down but then the face might be a bit off whereas if you start with the face you might capture the head really well but then you'll capture the gesture not so well so it's kind of like a give and take a little bit all the trailers just to see what happens out of curiosity i'm gonna watch it i usually avoid Honestly, can you imagine, like, I remember when they announced, hey, we're making a Barbie movie. I was like, what? A Barbie movie? And with Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, I was like, wait, what? What kind of movie is this going to be? Those are some, like, big name actors. There's a lot of big name actors in that movie. So I'm like, man, what is this movie going to be about? Um... It's a good skill to forget anything. <laughs> I I think that's just called being forgetful, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if it's a skill necessarily, but... Uh... <laughs> Actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this. And... Random question. If Barbie was an animal, which would she be? maybe a poodle i don't know a poodle i feel like that's the same <laughs> that's like a very safe in like this a straightforward standard answer why what do you think it would be sue since you threw the question out there what kind of animal do you think it would be or a bird maybe it's like a like a uh, a parrot you know the what the the white ones with those big kind of mohawk type of hairs? Maybe it's like that kind of bird. It could be like that. That's kind of a funny question though. Like, what kind of animal do you think it would be? Just wondering. <laughs> it's a good uh, food for thought. 
Yeah. It's a big budget cast. Yeah, it's... I remember seeing certain trailers and I was like, wait, that person's in it? Oh, wait, that person? What? What? What's going on? How can they have so many A-list actors in there? Your dog puke and you could just say, nope, I'm forgetting. <laughs> I, I guess, sure, but that's your dog puking, you know? Don't, don't you want to make sure that your dog is doing okay? <laughs> I guess that's not really something to keep in your memory bank, I guess. Like, who wants to remember that their dog <laughs> puked? I guess it is a very strange thing. I guess I'm not... Okay, I'm not going out of my way to remember my dog puking, but it's... <laughs> it's a very strange uh, example, I guess, to have been used, but that's kind of funny. Yeah, but... Wouldn't Barbie be more than one animal? Like, the amount of jobs. That's true. I feel like, you know, in keeping true to Barbie's personality, I think Barbie would have to always be one of those, like, fancy animals. So, like, a poodle, that, like, parrot that has those, like, fluffy hair thing. Um, it could be, like, a, like a, if it was a lizard, it would be those, uh, I don't know, some kind of, like, very fancy pretty pretty lizard golden retriever golden retriever is ken you know or at least the ken that's in the movie because i've seen the vibe ken has um <laughs> i feel like golden retriever is too too uh too goofy for for barbie yeah you know? but that's just me maybe maybe i'm like that's how i feel about it a flamingo. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think flamingo would be just like the colors are there and things too. Yeah, male peacock. Oh, peacocks. You know what? I mean, it just peacocks in general. I feel like is like a really good one because they're so like regal in general. Yeah, pink legs for days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If Barbie was a Pokemon. Oh, that's a good one. Unfortunately, I can't answer the Pokemon one because I I have like I know nothing about Pokemon. Like my parents never let me play Pokemon. I never had a Game Boy uh growing up. And uh and then I never watched the TV show, so Pokemon was never really a thing for me yeah i don't know so i know nothing i mean like i know a pokemon of course but i don't like know enough to be like yes this pokemon and whatnot not even like the trading cards my parents would be like we ain't spending money on that we're not buying you cards i think it was like five dollars for cards or a pack of cards and they'd be like we ain't, we ain't spending money on that there's better things to spend money on. But my parents also never bought like toys or anything. Or I mean, okay, they bought toys, but not like a lot of toys. So they were very, very uh, frugal with the money, which is a good thing. You know, looking back now, it's like I would probably have thrown out all those Pokemon cards since, you know, never play, would never play them now kind of thing. And I don't really collect them either, so... I feel like it wouldn't be that big of a deal for me. You never play. <laughs> Why can't Barbie be a fictional character? Isn't Barbie a fictional character? Definitely a Jigglypuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like Jigglypuff's a good answer. Fairy type. Uh, maybe, um... You know Tokopi? Is it Tokopi? You know the egg one? The small one that Misty? Is it Misty? Uh, the orange haired girl. You know the one when it evolves it turns into like a kind of a butterfly kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, Tokopi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's evolved version would also be like a Barbie type. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never played Pokemon. Never really watched Pokemon. No card games, no Game Boy or DS or I guess technically all the platforms. Um, <laughs> it was just never 
in the cards for me, you know? Unfortunately, it's never, never my thing. Which is totally okay. I am kind of okay with not having ever been a Pokemon, Pokemon person. Okay, let's get this. I was trying to get a fix on the proportions, so now that that's there, I'm going to try to get the, the actual face down. Okay, so got the hair coming down. Just going to quickly map out the shape for the hair. I'm um, not going to try to draw every single strand, but just get a feel for roughly how it's flowing down the head and where it's coming from and then we're gonna match the cowboy hat now for realistic proportions the eyebrows are probably gonna be somewhere around here eyes maybe here nose can't go super realistic because uh, we have very limited time and I feel like if I were to go full realistic, I would need a little bit more time to break down this character, but so far, fucking not too bad. It's looking okay. Gotta go now. Okay, bye-bye. It was nice, nice meeting you or seeing you. Thanks for joining the stream. Okay, let's see. Uh, for hats like this, I like to see where it's kind of highest point is, and I think the highest point. It's pretty even out, actually, I think. Let me see. Hair, hat, it's kind of starting maybe roughly around there. So, yeah. And then there's the little scarf. Or is, is this technically called an ascot? Like the one that she has on her neck? Because I know Ken... And I learned it from Toy Story. I, rem I remember it's like there was a name for it, and it was like the Ascot. And I was like, wait, what? That thing has a name? It's not like a, it's not just a handkerchief, or it's not just like a scarf or a cloth or whatever. Like it has an actual name. So is the one that she's wearing right now? Would that also be considered an Ascot? But I have no idea. You've absolutely never seen the Pokemon anime. <laughs> it's okay i also barely ever watched the anime as well the game boy emulator that's true you could technically and emulate and play it now i guess i could play it now i also have a switch so i could play the newer pokemon but i don't know now i don't i don't have any like real desire to play pokemon maybe because i never grew up with it so now i'm like eh, it's okay if i never play it it's fine it's fine <laughs> I think I made the head a bit too large, so I'm just going to shrink it down a little. Oh, that looks actually a lot better now. Thank goodness for digital art, where I can just lasso something and shrink it down. Makes life so much easier. We were saying this during the animation camp, where it's like, can you imagine how hard it would be to animate without the ability to lasso tool and change things? Oh my goodness. But I mean, technically, that's what they had to do back then. They would have to draw everything on paper, which is also mind-blowing. It's crazy. But, like, now digital makes it so much easier. Okay, that just looks kind of weird. That looks goofy. Okay. <laughs> that top of the hat looks a little weird. I've, I've definitely done something wrong. Need to adjust it a little. Oh, I see, I see. It's a bit too high, this part. I'm gonna lower it. Uh, let's say it like that. I think that's good. Didn't they used to animate like that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They did. Punching the. <laughs> yeah, I know. But technology makes it so much easier. Oh my goodness. Because sometimes you draw it and like the pose is there. It looks perfect. And then you realize like you flip between the different, uh, like frames and then you realize you drew it too small or it's too large you got the size inconsistent and it's like ah uh, it's such a good drawing but now i gotta redraw it because i got the size wrong 
And then that's where digital comes in handy because you don't have to worry about that. You just take the transform tool and you just make it bigger and voila. Don't even have to worry about it. Don't have to cry about it. It looks exactly the way it should be. Back in my day when you just did draw and paper. Exactly. <laughs> if Jigglypuff doesn't get what she wants, people fall in, goes crazy and draws people and all upset. Wait, is that is that following up on something? <laughs> that is what Jigglypuff does though. That is what Jigglypuff do. Yeah. This Hi. Oh hello. Hello for joining us. If you haven't heard, is teaching online. Yes, I am. Traditional mad respect for traditional artists. Yeah, it is mad respect. Yes. Uh animation camp unfortunately is done. There is no more for the rest of the summer but next week is drawing and painting so if that sounds interesting to you and you want to draw and paint with me and learn how to paint uh that's going on next week and then the week after that it's going to be character design again i believe let me check that my dates um ba -ba -ba -ba. oh actually no so there's going to be a one week break for me and then on the 14th to the 25th is two weeks of character design camp. So again, if that sounds good to you, that's my, that's the last camp. So we got next week is drawing and painting. And then from August 14th to 25th is the last time we're running or is the last camp that I'm going to be running, which is the character design camp. Um, and if that sounds interesting to you, feel free definitely maybe take a look at it and sign up for it uh we'll be i'll be teaching you how to draw characters how to draw like anatomy and the human structure as well as how to design characters that stand out and have flow all that kind of good stuff and it's really cool because everybody shares their drawings we kind of share what kind of ideas people are coming up with and it's really really awesome to see everybody's stuff so if that sounds interesting to you, it's still open. You can still sign up for it. It's still available. Jigglypuff is a tank. You know, I never got one of her moves. One of the moves is where she sleeps. And I've seen people on video use that move before. And I was like, wait, what? What is that? How'd you do that? <laughs> what is this move that you did? She literally like just falls asleep or whatever. like, And then... And then when you wake up, I think it's like Nox gives people like a high percentage damage. And I was just like, wait, what? What is this? How is that possible? Teach me. Teach me your ways. My main though was always Pikachu. I know. It's it's like every, it's like the go-to beginner spammer character. But there's a reason why it's just Pikachu is so easy to use. At least in uh, Smash Brawl. Uh, and then they totally weakened Pikachu's down B. Everybody's favorite move, the down B move that nobody, absolutely nobody got angry and annoyed by. <laughs> the infamous down B move. Uh, but the other character I used a lot too was Zero Suit. And then they also nerfed Zero Suit as well. Oh my goodness. Zero Suit's uh, down B was like this flip kick move. And it was so good. It was so strong. And then they completely were like, oh shoot. Maybe we didn't balance it quite well. And then <laughs> they totally weakened our kick move. And I was like, what is this? Why have you done this? It was perfectly fine because it made sense because she was like a weak Technically, she's kind of like a fast, but not super strong, heavy hitter type of a character. So it made sense that her kicks would be like really strong if you could land them. But then they took that out and I was like, what? what why? Why? That's not cool. That's not fair. <laughs> I wanted to see my animation puzzle flipbook. <laughs> Flipbook as in sketchbook flipbook? Hey, look at that. Sketchbook has a flip flipbook section to it that you can use to animate. <laughs> it is pretty savage. 
My bad. Yeah, yeah, animation ended today, unfortunately. But, yeah. Oh, and thank you, Kevin. Yeah, push in my profile. That is my profile. And, yeah, we're going to be doing, doing continuing some, with some awesome character designs in about, like, three, starting in three weeks. August 14th. August 14th, everybody. Yeah, 14th. A classic is a classic. Uh, let me see. My main is Eevee. Love Eevee. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I feel like you can't go wrong with original Pokemon. You know. Kirby or Snake? Yo, Kirby. I had a friend who played as Kirby and then I played as Zelda and I just spammed uh Zelda's fireball move and I killed him without taking a single damage and all I did was just blast the fireball <laughs> at him while he was using Kirby it was pretty funny and it's crazy too because Brawl was with the smash or what am I saying Brawl was with with the Wii and I got really good at using just the Wii remote to play Smash and then everybody's like no the real way is to use the GameCube controller or like a controller and I can't use the controller I think it's just I got so used to using the Wii remote to play Smash that I couldn't learn how to use like an actual controller so I'm the best at Smash using a, just the Wii remote but I can't use like a regular remote. It's so, it's so sad. It's so embarrassing. Okay, I don't know if uh, I, I feel like I want to actually invest a little bit more time on the exaggerated proportion one, uh, just because like. Realistic one just requires a little bit more time, whereas the stylized one is a bit easier to pull off. So I'm going to kind of almost end it here for this one. And this is one with more realistic proportions. And I'll try to maybe get in the face. Hopefully it doesn't turn out terrible. But here's our character with here's Barbie with the strut with the strut gonna try to clean up the lines a little bit more because it's all messy you can see the erasing lines <laughs> the old old build up lines for it oh and I guess I also have my brush kind of big I hate when people use Ness oh yeah that, that's so annoying Ness oh those are such good memories. I, my sister got uh, Smash on the Switch, and we were like, yeah, we're going to play it. And we have not touched it at all. So it's kind of funny when people come over and they're like, oh, do you have Smash? And we're like, yeah. And then they open up the game and there's like zero characters because we unlocked no characters at all. And they're like, where are your characters? Like, oh, we just have not played it. So there are no characters except for the starting ones. <laughs> Sorry about that. But Mario Kart, now that was a game that I was just like, I am going to beat this game. I don't care how hard it is, I will beat 200cc on Mario Kart. I will get the three stars on 200cc. And I believe I lost a little bit of my soul trying to beat that 200cc because oh my goodness, <laughs> it is... It is brutal. I don't know if anyone's ever tried doing 200cc, but like Mario Kart, if you thought Mario Kart was already all luck based, try beating it on 200cc because, oh my goodness. <laughs> Here's the funny thing is I still kind of play 200cc for fun. <laughs> just to see, just to be like, was it really that bad? Yeah, I haven't played it in a while. Is it really that bad? And I play it as like, oh my goodness, yes. Yes, it is that bad. Boy. <laughs> Nintendo, how could you have thought 200cc like this is, is like fair? 
CC. I don't know what CC means. I think it's just the speed. Well, it, it means the speed. 50 CC is the slowest. That's the one you start off with. Uh, and then it goes 100, 150, and then they added 200 for Mario Kart 8. And it goes so fast that you, you have to actually kind of break or be really, really good at drifting. Uh, or pick the right car, basically. Which also is annoying because Nintendo didn't make a great, great UI for the cart picking. Like with the stats and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of made it hard to figure out what car was actually good. And every car stat changed based on which character you were choosing to. Which is like, well, why, why, why'd you do that? Well, why'd you make it so hard? <laughs> Let's see. I did not spend a single amount of time on the legs so i'm just gonna quickly mark down like the legs a little bit this line is not that far down and it's more of like closer to the edge and yeah this pants i love this bootleg though it's so cool it is a really over the top type of pants but i really like it it's really cool the starters are okay though my favorite character is fox true fox fox is a good one me and my sister love trying to reflect each other's bullets <laughs> we like try to time it back when we were like kids and we're trying to like just do goofy things she would i would pick wolf and then she would pick fox or falco or falcon or whatever his name was. Uh, and then we try to reflect each other's blaster beams from one another. Which I feel like that was a thing a lot of people did. A lot of kids would try to like deflect the beam <laughs> off of each other. This is kind of funny. This is kind of neat. Yeah, Brawl was my childhood. Oh my goodness. The memories of just going to friend's house and playing Brawl for so long. Oh, what a what a good memory. It's such such good times. Yeah, which is so it's kind of weird that I just found like zero interest in the new Smash Bros on the Switch. And again, I don't really know why. Just maybe it's just not the kind of game. Just grew out of it, which is kind of sad <laughs> thinking about it. It's like, I've grown out of Smash. I don't really have no love for it anymore. <laughs> PD Piranha. What, what is PD Piranha? I tried 200cc. The bane of my existence. It is. 200cc is... Uh, <laughs> it's like It's like a trauma thinking about 200 cc it's like uh, 200 what is this because it's all luck based or at least it feels like luck based to me i don't know uh, she's kind of smiling in a way Let me trying to just loosen up these loosen up these brows and space it out a bit she's smiling so that's why the cheeks are kind of pushing up and margot robbie's got like these really um she's got a in very interesting face structure actually i would say it's like it it's not your conventional like i guess pointy face but she's got a little bit of like a wide jaw but not, not a it's more of her cheeks i guess uh, and then her, her, like, her jaw is not that wide, but it's the cheeks. She's got very defined, puffy cheeks. Not, not in the puffy in a bad way, but like, it's, it's very, um, it's a lot. <laughs> that it stands out and creates a very interesting, unique face for, for her. It's 6.03, so I'm going to try to finish this up. I know I said that like a while ago. I was like, yeah, I'm going to move on to the stylized one. And I'm still on this <laughs> this one. Uh... 
Let's see, she's kind of smiling. Maybe the eyebrows aren't that that high. I'm gonna make it a little lower. Just a smidge. Like this is like focus mode now. Just like okay, not not gonna say it too much because I need to need to focus. And we'll see. Add some hair strands so that there's a little bit of a flow to it. Whoa! It's in Japanese. I hope it's something nice, but okay. <laughs> Become a youth. Oh yeah. Guess who's playing? Who's now playing Brawl? <laughs> You're welcome. I hope you're having a good time playing Brawl. <laughs> Wait, how'd you even boot up your? Uh... Do you have a Wii just on standby? <laughs> That's kind of crazy if you have a Wii on standby, or if it's like a mo emulator, then I guess that makes a little bit more more sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I guess it's because it's so bright, so. Yeah, I guess we'll keep it like this, maybe, for now. The perfectionist part of me is like, I must adjust the hat now, too. Okay, okay, once I adjust this hat, I will move on to the stylized one. <laughs> I feel like that's the bane of all all artists is that art it's never done got to keep working on it oh there's this to adjust oh there's this to change and improve <laughs> so yeah okay we'll kind of maybe leave it here for now but um you don't know the hit mario character pd piranha oh oh right did they they added that as a character right that's kind of funny yeah Okay, so now I'm going to draw the stylized version, and I'm just going to shrink these references a little bit, move it over. It's still going to be my guide and what I'm going to be basing it on, and I'm also going to move this one over here. Maybe I'll shade it. Oh, you know what? It's in blue. We have to make it kind of fit the style of barbie we're gonna go hot pink okay so i'm just gonna choose a color in in here gotta go pink holy <laughs> it is it is a bright it is like bright pink Ooh. oh boy okay uh and then maybe off stream afterwards i'll just really quickly color it in so we have a solid drawing but here's the line work in pink for for the more realistic grounded version of Barbie. Hope you guys can see it. Maybe I'll put a backdrop color behind it so it's a bit easier to tell. And for those who are in my uh, character design class, they know I love I love good old yellow. Yellow is a nice 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 color. We'll go for maybe a lighter version. This is actually kind of a nice vibe. It's like very peaceful, kind of very sunny vibe for for Barbie over here. I also brawl just broke and I've said no. I still have like the game in like I think perfect condition, like the box for it, which is crazy because the game is like I think more than 10 years old now which is it's like dang it's been a while yeah just gonna save it just in case breaks um okay so i'm not gonna delete it um i'll clear these ones because we don't need them anymore and i'm just gonna clear this one and let's see okay so what I'm going to do now is I've taken a pose that I found on the internet, which is this one. And I'm going to draw it, draw that pose in 
in Barbie style. <laughs> and I've got the doll, so I have an idea as to roughly what the proportions and what Barbie looks like. Um, and we're going to give this a shot. We got a little under an hour, and we are going to see how this turns out. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Woo! Okay. <laughs> I... I also need to like psych myself up sometimes like yeah we got this yes <laughs> that's how I psych myself up okay mm. round that you made the sketch so aesthetically pleasing oh thank you yeah love drawing like you do thank you thank you okay so you gotta definitely change the colors back to we'll go with red for the underlying uh i'm gonna try to draw this pose but barbify it i guess well, is that a word i don't i don't really know so for poses that i'm trying to exaggerate something that i've kind of taught my mentorship class is to look for three distinct angles so i'm gonna just lower the opacity of this again i look for three distinct angles and what i look for is the angle from the head to the neck and then the neck to about like the end of the pelvis and then from the pelvis to the legs so we got three different angles right here and these three angles help guide how i can kind of angle and distort the body basically um i'll still do the same thing that i mentioned beforehand which is to look at where the head is and drop a straight line down so i get an idea as to roughly the balance and alignment of this figure and as i'm looking at this this is kind of what i'm spotting in terms of observation so i'm going to be using that to help guide my drawing barbification yes that is <laughs> let the barbification begin <laughs> more than one reference only having one is a little too little yeah so we're going to be stylizing this uh i'm going to be in a way i guess using doing it in my own style while using the proportions that Barbie has. So from this pose, I see that the head's pretty small, the body's kind of medium-sized, and the legs are really long. So I'm actually going to kind of maybe do that for the pose. And I'm going to push the body back even more. So this is Barbie with attitude, I guess, in a way. This is kind of a pose that I... type of pose that I love to draw. Let's see. Okay, so... Barbie, oh, for but I'm using this one. So you know what? I'm going to add the the roller skates. This is going to be Barbie on roller skates. And we're going to see how this turns out. <laughs> how will it turn out? Uh, we shall see. Now, Barbie has like a very pinched kind of uh, body structure. So we're going to try to maintain that. And let's see, does these pants, I don't think these pants have, uh, I don't think these pants have, uh, pockets. Like the bell-bottom pants that she's wearing in the cowboy outfit, I don't think there's pockets, so. This is, uh, Barbie with attitude, and just quickly mapping it out. Let's see, the pants, oh right, the pants go big. I'm gonna go out. Just quickly mapping out roughly what it should look like, maybe. Like the wheels would be here. Maybe that's a bit too low. I'm gonna move this up. Actually, in the photo it is lower, so I think I might... Excuse me. Ooh. Might just move this. Actually, I'm probably just gonna delete this. And move it. Pointing towards the camera and we'll see how this how this works and let's do this <laughs> Kardashian and Mean Girls weren't cast for the movies that'd be a lot of plastic oh my god I <laughs> that's actually kind of that I kind of like that. 
that would have been kind of neat if, you know, they were part of the movie. <laughs> oh, the hard part's gonna be the cowboy hat. Oh, uh, the cowboy hat, why? Why are you here? Let's see. And the hair's coming down. Barbie's got a pretty thin neck. Let's see. Those. Maybe I should have gotten another reference for the Barbie toy, because I'm kind of like, how thin are Barbie's arms? I actually am not too sure how thin Barbie's arms are. Okay, let's see. The pants did kind of like a V thing. Uh, I'm going to give it a bit more of a crop for the pants so that the hands can rest on the waist. And you can see a little bit more. And I feel like this is Sheriff Cowboy Barbie now with the way it is. <laughs> Just gonna move this over. And I'm gonna move the leg over. I'm doing this really quickly because uh, there's like a momentum and flow that I want to capture as I'm looking at this. Where I'm like, oh, I really like this. And I want to try to capture that. Like capture that in the flow. And really, really try to push it as much as I can. Kind of a deal. I might actually even shrink this a little bit. So that there's a little bit more foreshortening happening this is probably not a super accurate foreshortening but i want to have a little bit of it so that i'm pushing the legs because i love how close the legs are to the to the camera so i'm gonna try to do that we're gonna we're gonna push this pose we're gonna really really go for it basically Uh, yeah, maybe, I guess, you know, the figure should be a little smaller then. So then we can push the leg or the foot. Have these wheels come out. Something like this. <laughs> Hello, I'm Barbie. <laughs> yeah. The worst you can say is no. <clears throat> I'm wait. What is happening? <laughs> what are people talking about? How do you force you? I just tried to earlier. It looks like, uh, I, I mean, it's just trying to keep things a little bit smaller. I know that doesn't really maybe help, but perspective is like a big part of how I try to work on foreshortening. Um. And also there's, uh, I might warp stuff. So you can see how big the feet are. If I put it next to the body, the body's really, or the head, not the body. The feet, it's way, it's almost double the size of the head. So that's a good way of just like the consistency. And as things get closer and closer, they get more warped. So that's something that I'm keeping in mind as I'm doing it. Um, but I'm doing this really quickly. So technically it might be wrong once I clean it up um, but yeah gonna just... this is like Barbie with attitude <laughs> uh, okay so I don't think I need this anymore we'll bring back the saturation for that and we'll lower this even more so I'm not too distracted by the lines <laughs> loving this one so far yeah yeah for shortening i think the key thing is to just make sure that as things are closer to pick a point that or at least in the beginner sense when it comes to foreshortening think of like where the camera is and what is closer to so some people might foreshorten the waist area meaning the head and the feet 
gets smaller, so it has more of a fisheye lens. Uh, this one, I want to really up the pose, so the camera is looking upwards towards the, the person. So meaning every element, as it goes higher and higher, you want to make sure it's staying in consistency with the size that I'm putting out. Um, okay, I'm just going to zoom in so that I can see the, the head for Sheriff Barbie over here. I hope I can make it look good. It's like, why why did I go for <laughs> a, a tricky pose? I guess I didn't technically have to, but then I was like, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's let's do a tricky pose. Uh, something like this and because we're also looking up at her that's also a big factor as well uh, let's see what is Barbie's nose Barbie's got a bit more like a button nose I'm not gonna go super hard with like making it look exactly like the figure but See, Barbie has got kind of big eyes, but not not that big. I'm like, I probably have to go a bit quiet for a little bit because I'm like focusing on <laughs> on this face. Uh, let me see if I can get it right. So I think this is gonna essentially set the tone for. this piece basically uh, and I'm not gonna draw the jaw sometimes it's actually good to not draw the jaw so that uh and it is a must hard <laughs> yeah sheriff barbie <laughs> yeah uh i'm gonna try not to draw the um probably not gonna draw the the draw the jaw too much just maybe slightly indicated a little bit that's kind of like the make or break aspect of a pose like this is how you execute that so i'm actually going to use the original drawing that i had here and i'm going to follow how i simplified that hair swoop let's see we'll make it big big and kind of chunky uh and then the hair kind of flowed to the back and then it kind of came in a little bit All right, and then she has the little handkerchief, or as I was kind of mentioning, Ascot, which I'm assuming that that's maybe what it's called. Oh, that's a terrible swoop. I'm going to try to make it nicer. Uh, let's see, the hat comes probably a bit more forward. Uh, and because we're foreshortening it, it means that uh, we'll probably be looking, we're looking up at the hat in a way where perspective wise, it's kind of like this. So that's why when I was drawing the tips of the hat, that's kind of what I was trying to make sure was like correct. Sheriff Barbie, yeah, this is so good. Oh, thank you, Theo. These two are just taking nice stroll, and you have to say they'll find you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. He's like, I will find you. You better not say anything bad about my movie. You know. Uh, let's see. Does the hair hang down? Let's see. 
Uh, I feel like it mostly came to... Maybe I guess it kind of hangs down. So it'll cover maybe the handkerchief a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the shoulders. So, Or I guess we'll move on to her jacket a little bit first, actually. We're going to go for a very angular kind of vibe. I might have made her body a bit too long, but we'll see about that. Uh, yeah, I might have made her shoulders a bit too, body a bit too long, so we'll start it kind of like this. Now again, I mentioned, like, I don't know exactly how thin Barbie's arms are, so I'm, a, I'm gonna kind of just take a guess that she kind of has thin arms. Uh, and she's not wearing anything in this outfit, whoops, my bad. She's not wearing anything, uh, for this outfit in particular, so I'm just gonna make it bare arms. Meaning like she's not wearing any bracelet or any kind of trinkets or accessories or anything like that. Uh... And then you got the buttons. And let's see. Alright, I'm cropping the outfit. Yeah, I made her arms like really, really long. Maybe I'll... Uh, actually... You know, I can't you know we'll see how I how how it is I'm kind of like oh maybe do I keep how long those arms are I guess you guys do you guys like how long the arms are or do you want me to shorten them because I guess technically maybe they're a little bit too long but uh let's see the hand that's sitting here hand let me see I do not have good reference for the hand. I'm going to have to just make it up for the hand. Uh, maybe something like this for the hand. I think the thing that everybody kind of makes fun of Barbie for is like how thin that waist is. So we are going to push that. We're going to make her, th her waist super thin. And then because the angle of the shoulders is going down to the right, then I'm going to make the hip actually angle more to the uh, up to the right. So it's swinging this way. So the hip, the shoulders were going this way. The hips are going to swing upwards. Um, let's see. The hand goes there and goes like this. Let me see. I'm trying to think of like how the hand would be. You know, we'll figure out the other hand <laughs> after I get the body kind of figured out. We got half an hour. I think we got this. We got enough time to get like a good line work down. Let's see. The pants. Oh, the pants did kind of are kind of pointy though. Let's Okay, something actually maybe the pant would be like here and we've got the buttons from the pants which are pretty cool and, and then we got to have a bit of the folds kind of going in inwards a little bit and we're gonna stretch this pant leg out and let's see a look at some of the other angles just to see how the pants look so that's the point of having some reference just so that i can see how the pants are working because i don't know how i don't wear pants like this so i don't know what these pants like how they would fold like what's the how they work essentially so having reference for pants like this is pretty good When the buttons on Barbie be oversized? Ah, oh, that's a good one. I like that. I will take that suggestion. We'll go over, over, well, I don't know how oversized you want it to be. 
well <laughs> it'll make it we'll make it super oversized i guess technically this one up here might i'll have to probably keep it smaller as we're moving up the body uh, but yeah i don't know art yeah no remember to save i always like uh as much as I say it to my students, it's also like something I say to myself. It's like, gotta save. Remember to save. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're able to re recover your file. Oh my goodness. Um, Mike might be coming over here, actually. And the left foot. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of hard seeing what the roller skates look like. But from the looks of it, it they just look like very chunky boots uh, with roller like wheels on them. So I'm just going to maybe give like a very simple, straightforward design for the shoe. Um, I'm also not too sure what roller skates look like which is probably something i should have <laughs> looked up beforehand but it's fine it's fine and let's see i feel like barbie is more of like a roller skater rather than a roller blader so we're gonna go with some roller skates not roller blades and i'm gonna just have a very rough guideline for the wheels just so that it looks kind of like they're in perspective. Uh, so I'm just going to follow something like that, maybe, for the wheels. Nothing nothing too crazy. Nothing too fancy. Just like very, very straightforward. And I think roller skates, they sometimes have those things sticking out. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's the cool... Between roller skates and roller blades. I think roller blades is the single file one. So that or that's how I think of them. Like how ice skates, they're like blades, it's one row. And then roller oh wait, that's roller blades. And then roller skates are the ones that are four wheelers, where it's kind of like a car. Or at least I think that's how it is. I might be wrong. But yeah, there's a difference. And uh that's I've never tried them. I've never tried roller skating or blading before. I've just been ice skating. I'm assuming that roller blading is similar to ice skating, but I could be wrong. I'm going to go big with this shoe. Go big. This is outside, so technically there's no bump on it. Let's go. Let's see. How did I design this? <laughs> I love designing shoes, but the one thing about designing shoes is consistency. Where it's just like, if you added a design on a shoe one side you gotta be like oh crap now i gotta worry about the other side too like how's the other side looking actually this kind of plays in a little bit to jesse's stream from last week about um fisheye lens so it's very kind of similar to force perspective as things are as you're warping them and you're drawing them closer to the camera things are gonna start looking as if you're looking down on them kind of a deal so that's why this thing that's here on the roller skates i'm looking kind of down on them or at least that's kind of the vibe i'm trying to try to capture it's a tough one because it's also at an angle these things are at an angle and i don't know why i picked such a tricky thing to draw to try to capture uh but yeah hopefully it gets the essence of it fine and it should be okay. Yeah, I didn't think I would be drawing warped. 
ice roller skates, so I did not look for any roller skating references, but I should have. That is on me. Yeah. Okay, so here we have a rough sketch. The shoes are definitely rougher. <laughs> Skates are way easier than rollerblades. Are they? So wait, did I get it right? Yeah, it's the way the wheels are arranged. So rollerblades are single filed, and then roller roller blades are single filed. Roller skates are the four wheelered ones, right? I'm assuming. <laughs> Hello there, how are you doing Josh? I am doing good. Thank you for joining. We are kind of coming near the, well, I mean we got a little under half an hour left, so we still got a bit of time. Actually, I'm surprised that I finished um, this more stylized one kind of early. <laughs> I'm surprised that it went by faster. I guess because like when you're styling something, you're just kind of on a roll. Whereas realistic, I guess I get a bit more, uh, like, ooh, you know, caught up in the aspect of trying to make it realistic. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna crop this down a little bit more. We'll make the buttons big, ish, big ish, not super big. But here it is. Here's the stylized version. I might move the arm up actually. Let's just try it and see how it looks. Okay. This is kind of tricky to lasso, actually. Yeah, this, yeah, this is better. I'm going to just shrink the arm. Technically, I kind of, I could maybe spend a little bit more time fixing the, the hand and how I've arranged it, but I'm gonna put more of the time into just uh, refining the line work and getting some coloring in. Just cleaning it up a little bit. I'm personally, I love line textures, so I like to keep it rough and not super, super refined or anything. So that's kind of just how I like to approach it. Um, so if you're like, oh, he's saying he's cleaning it up, but it's not like super clean or anything. How come he's not like going all out on cleaning it? And that's kind of why it's just I like the rougher, sketchier approach to drawing things. So... Yeah, that's kind of why I'm kind of just going about it in this way. <laughs> you were gone? No worries. Is like a Mary, but isn't that inferior? <laughs> I guess. I never thought of it that way, but yeah. Why would jump in the stairs with roller skates? And surprisingly, he only got her when jumping up the stairs. <laughs> got a little bit overconfident, maybe. <laughs> Twenty-four minutes. Josh Pokemon stream. When <laughs> is that? What you want a Pokemon stream of me? You know what? It should be what I think the Pokemon's look like because I don't know anything about Pokemon's. It'd be like the word. You know, someone explains and describe what the Pokemon's look like, and I have to kind of guess what I think the Pokemon looks like. Is that an idea that would get greenlit? I I don't know, but. Pokemon themed streams kind of interesting. That could be something we could like maybe get a feel for. From memory. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean like it's not really memory because I have no idea what some of the newer Pokemons look like. Uh, so it really would just be like, what do you think this Pokemon would look like based on how it sounds? And I'd be like, uh, <laughs> like this, maybe? Don't know. 
I have no idea. <laughs> And these boots were huge. Got big with these boots. Or I guess they're not boots, they're roller the the shoes. The roller shoes. They got massive. Made them huge. Man, I need to practice. I'm a little out of practice for ellipses. Haven't drawn ellipses in a while. They are all very, very wonky. Everybody's favorite ellipsis. Ellipsis. Sounds like a name, actually. Ellipsis. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, that's actually kind of a cool name. Ellipsis. Yeah, indeed. Okay, we're on, like, the final hours that's why I'm kind of not final hours I mean final minutes so I'm trying to just like refine the wheels because it's like ooh, there's a lot to draw for the wheels and I'm just gonna lightly indicate the wheels I'm not gonna really go in to the details for them okay what else can I clean up uh, the pants I guess I could didn't really do a good job with these lines here and I think it's because I didn't fully explore how it's kind of strapped on to how it's wrapping around the body so let's see how is it moving so i feel like it's close to this one over here in terms of how the pants would stretch so i'm going to use that one as a reference more so than um this one that we started off with so i like how it's kind of bunching up let's see we got Oh, the buttons. I guess I could have it come off the buttons a little bit. Okay, let's see. The pants might have some. Mm, should I draw some lines? Eh, don't really. Mm, don't really like how it looks. So probably. Uh, I, I don't know. Well, I will draw a line there. See, see how it feels. Okay, let's see. Let's just erase. I'm like so used to drawing uh, kind of defined shoulders, but I think for Barbie, we're not going to define it too much. This cowboy sheriff Barbie with, uh, imagine defined, defined deltoids, the muscles. Barbie's, her gain, her gains, this is her gains uh, model. Just gonna save in case. Boy. Line variation in my sketch. Yeah. She started with skate wheels. Once you learn with skates, you'll learn to use blades and almost instantly. I wonder if. Oh. I feel like picking up ice skating is not too hard, but. Yeah. Alexis, that's true. <laughs> Ellipsis. Maybe that's why I was like, it sounds like a name. It sounds like a disease. <laughs> I guess it also does sound like a disease a little bit. She walked on her toes? That, that sounds really over the top. <laughs> okay. Let me see if there's anything... Yeah, line variation is a very good thing to try to work on, too. Uh, if anybody's kind of like, oh... If you ever feel like your line work kind of feels a little off, eh, sometimes it actually is just line variation. The drawing and the structure is there, but the, the line, there's not much line variation. Or the shape and flow of your lines doesn't quite match the figure that you're drawing. Kind of thing. So I like to go more for a looser, sketchier vibe. So I don't worry too much about um, 
I guess in a way things like like those. Um, I worry more about like the texture, about how of how the lines feel when you're drawing them. So when I'm drawing, I'm thinking about thick and thin. I'm thinking about how sketchy and how loose the lines can be and how they lead up to one another. Like those are some of the things that I'm kind of uh, mulling over in a sense when I'm drawing. And let's see, is there anything else? I feel like this is pretty, pretty good for a final go at the line work. Trying to see if there's anything really... Oh, the hand. Yeah. I guess this, this hand is just going to be tucked into the pocket. Well, just imagine that this hand is, is tucked in to the pocket over there. <laughs> just created a sequel. Oh, that'd be so cool. I don't know. I think that sounds pretty cool. Sheriff Barbie... It's like a gritty Barbie movie. <laughs> gritty Barbie as a sheriff. I think that would be pretty neat. Also, irregularities with the lines, I feel like, also helps. Uh, differentiating a little bit of the the movement and flow of the drawing. So it's not necessarily always clean, uh, thick to thin, necessarily. Yeah. And sometimes uh, if you do want to put in color as well, color can change the feel and flow of the drawing. So just because the line work looks good and you're like, yeah, this looks really good. And then you go in for the colors and it's like, why does it not look like the exact same drawing? And that's because color plays a big factor in the feel and overall texture of your drawing. So that's kind of like how I like to think about drawing and character designing as well is that it's all texture. You know, at the end of the day, it's uh, how you want to stylize something is um, dependent on the type of texture you want to make for your drawing. Okay, let me see how much time. We got 15 minutes. I'm going to block this in as well. Should we go with red lines? Uh, maybe not red lines. Let's go with like dark magenta, like saturated kind of lines. I feel like that'd be good. And then I'll like quickly color this one in. <laughs> Tip of the toes, yeah. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised. <clears throat> Let's go yellow. Gotta go yellow all the time. Let's see, how's this look? Hey, maybe, maybe a bit, a bit, a bit lighter. Yeah, ooh, yes. Yes, this is, I like this. This is a good, good, nice, cool approach. I'm not going to color it with that brush. It's going to take forever. The tiptoes, yeah. That's true. It's it's ingrained into the way she stands. It's forever like that. It's a ranch. Ranch Barbie. Uh, okay, let's see. We'll go with pink. Just gonna choose the one that's on the... That's already in the photo. I'm gonna go with that. Oh my goodness, this is so saturated. <laughs> oh, this is kind of cool though. 
we're just gonna color the whole thing pink for now. I know the shoes are like a lime green, but we will just go with this for now. And block printing? Yeah, yeah, I love that block printing approach to it. And I'm using a textured brush, so everything is not super straightforward. Just a little bit of texture. I'm using a big brush, so it's not super clean or anything. I'm not worrying too much about how clean it all looks, giving it a little bit of uh, a print vibe, as Joanne said. Very illustration approach to this. It's kind of what I'm going for. So yeah, I've been really loving pushing kind of style in the poses lately. And if you want to see more of that, remember I am hosting a character design camp that's starting in two weeks. Uh, but if you're also interested in painting, I am also doing a painting intensive that is starting on monday this coming monday so if you are interested in painting alongside me and kind of chatting and chilling uh, but while also learning how to paint feel free to sign up for that camp uh it's only going to be for one week and then after that break it will be character design so yeah Don't argue you said ranch and I was picturing the dressing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, that's that's kind of funny. Ranch. Ranch Barbie. Can you believe how like crazy sometimes marketing goes where they'll like the toothpaste is sometimes like I remember as a kid there'd be like uh if a special movie came out, I can't remember. Let's say we'll go back to Pokemon. If the Pokemon movie came out, it'd be like Pokemon themed toothpaste and it'd be like Pokemon themed bandages and I was always like but but why <laughs> why are we using those 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 like does it matter yeah but apparently that's just how it is okay man these green shoes are going <laughs> insane okay I'm just gonna light it up a bit because these colors are going off the charts what color were the wheels the wheels oh my goodness the wheels were also pink oh my goodness okay this is like a very 90s very early 2000s kind of vibe my goodness let's see go for let's go with this color Okay, let's see and then the pants everything's pink and then for her skin tone actually let's do the let's do the hat first hat we're going on the orange side and then we're gonna make it very very close to white pink with green i know i i you know what i didn't choose the colors that's uh what the color on the photo was so i'm just gonna stick with it and just see how it goes maybe it wouldn't be my first color choice but that's just what it looked like uh let's see what else oh the blonde hair let's see um, how blonde should we make it let's pick maybe that's is this like how does this look mm, no not going that route let's see how does this look this one's not too bad we'll go with this one this color for the hair This is a uh, Barbie with attitude, you know. I guess the background can't be yellow then. It was actually looking pretty cool. I like this. Uh, skin tone. Go on the more red. Red. Or let's go like really saturated. Let's see how this looks. 
It's like watermelon. Hey, that is true. Ooh, that's not. Mm. Maybe the yellow background's a bit too bright. Let's push it. Let's do another color. What kind of color? Let's do orange. Hmm. What kind of zany colors should we go for? Then blue? No. Purple? Let's see, how does purple look? Purple's kind of interesting. Let's go with purple for now. Oops. Not what I wanted. I feel like the skin color might be, you know, we'll push it. Maybe that's a bit too bright. Just lower it a little bit. Yeah. And uh, I guess we'll use white for the eyes so that it's easy to spot that it's eyes. Um, let's see, there's no other, oh right, the, here, it's technically also skin, oh, okay, nice, why not, plenty, mm. excuse me, my bad, keep buying tea flavors, I guess that's a reason. Yeah. Marketing it, it plays a plays a pretty big factor. You know, we'll go darker on the pink actually, because I think it's not it's not pink enough. It needs to be more pink. More intense with the pinks. I guess that technically could have been shadow. Uh oh uh, well. Another time. Let's see, we've got four minutes left. Yeah, not, not going to have enough time to any add any real like shadows or anything. But I think we'll like leave it at this for now. So this is uh, technically, I guess this isn't really Barbie. Pro well, it's a little bit of Barbie proportions. we got the narrow waist. we got the wide shoulders and the very thin legs and arms and proportions so we got um here i'll turn off the reference i guess after stream i will color in the more realistic one so we got two versions we got real barbie <laughs> real barbie on the right which i spent maybe a bit too much time on trying to just get draw down and then we got sheriff barbie <laughs> sheriff uh over the top kind of crazy color combo type of uh barbie yeah thank you sue thank you for the ten dollars really appreciate it as always it's awesome yeah thank you uh and i hope i didn't miss any other donations but yeah thank you as always um so i guess we'll we can end it here um before we go again just kind of want to thank you everyone for joining the stream really uh appreciate all the conversations for like kind of chiming in as we're talking about barbie and apparently pokemon and mario kart and a bunch of other stuff as well uh hope you guys enjoyed the stream if you liked what you saw here uh feel free to give us a like we really uh, really um, appreciate the support that you guys are able to give so if you enjoyed the video give us a like and if you want to continue being updated with like our videos and our streams definitely subscribe so you'll know when our upcoming streams are coming in and you guys can also vote for the type of streams that we do because sometimes we put out polls for uh, the topics and the subject matters that we do um, and as always, we are not just a YouTube channel, we are also an art school. So if you liked what we are doing here, we also have classes 
I teach one of them, Iggy teaches, Jesse teaches, uh, and Vanessa's also teaching an intensive as well throughout the summer. Uh, I'm doing character design as we have mentioned throughout the stream. Uh, but next week is drawing and painting for me. So if you are curious about any of our intensives, feel free to check it out on the websites. Uh, but drawing and painting and character design is one that I am hosting uh, in the coming weeks. Um, and of course, we also have Patreon. So if you want to support us and continue allowing us to stream, feel free to uh, support us on Patreon. It comes with a lot of perks that, such as chat and critiques on discord it comes with file art files that we do sometimes you'll also even get uh recordings from our classes as well as a lot of youtube uh member per uh emotes and badges on discord and on youtube so yeah and um if you like this image and you would like to see it in all its glory and all its resolution uh feel free to sign up for our social medias like discord instagram and facebook that's where we post a lot of the drawings that we do on our streams so if you want to see what it like the full thing how it looks uh definitely sign up for our social medias that's how you'll be able to see how it looks like and not through youtube's compression and all that all that nasty pixelation and all that stuff so yeah and uh well this is it i uh, hope you guys really enjoyed the stream i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the drawing i had a lot of fun drawing this and drawing the whole barbie kind of character um so yeah and that's it for me and i will I'm, I'm waving because i'm so used to streaming i'm waving by but i you guys can't see me waving but i am waving by uh but uh yeah that's kind of it bye i'll see you next time Bye.